gonna start over. Oh. Back to the beginning. Well, hello, Grace Bible Church. It's good to be back in front of the camera with you again uh, doing this week's edition of our Pastor Cast. It's been a long time since I've done this with you, and so it's good to be here with you uh, on camera tonight. I uh, do have a few updates for you as we start uh, to let you know. First, we want to encourage you to say goodbye to Connie and Del Wyatt. They've been neighbors of mine for 23 years. They've lived in my neighborhood for over 50 years, and they've been part of this church for about 17 years, and they are now on their way to Missouri here shortly. Uh, my family will miss them. Uh, they've been nice, dear friends of ours uh, over the last several years, part of my community group years and years ago, and it's been our pleasure to be interacting with them over these last weeks and months as we've been part of their life, helping them get ready to move. So this Sunday will be their final Sunday here with us. I believe they're going to be attending the second hour, our 1115 service in the courtyard. So if you happen to be sitting out there in the courtyard with Connie and Dell, please wish them well as they look to move on with their lives back east to be with their family. Also want to let you know that during this time we have received uh, a few new members to Grace Bible Church. Uh, their names are Scarlett Atensel, uh, Carl and Nina Alcantara, Noe Hernandez, and Lizzie Franklin. So if you know these folks, please welcome them. Uh, we do hope to introduce these saints to you over the course of the next several weeks uh, where we can formally put them in front of you and uh, so that you guys can all know them, get to put a face to their names, and know that they are now part of our church and seeking to become active members and participants within the body. On a personal note, I just do want to share with you all my own experience. Last Sunday was the very first Sunday for me to worship indoors with the body of Christ here at Grace Bible Church. Um, when we opened up in July, I wasn't able to be a part of any of those gatherings, and it was my first time in over six months uh, to worship with the saints, and it was I told Tony afterwards that it was like putting on an old shoe for me. It was comfortable. It was good. It was right. Uh, it was welcoming. And I was reminded that sitting at home in my living room with a cup of coffee is not really how God intended worship to be. And so uh, I was overjoyed to be there. And I, uh, I know that for many of you that... Uh, the realities of the virus keep you home, and you are welcome to stay home. Uh, for those of you who are at high risk and you just aren't comfortable coming back to church yet, we encourage you to exercise your freedom to stay home and do that. For some of you who are sick, uh, we encourage you to stay home and, and get well and, and rest up. And, but for the rest of us, we can now gather as a church with limited restrictions, meeting in person, to indoors, to worship. Uh, we have three separate locations, as Chris shared with you last week, one in our worship center, one in our fellowship hall, and then also in our courtyard. And in order to accommodate the flow of traffic, we have three separate entrances for all three locations. For those of you who will be worshiping in the worship center, we ask you to enter through the back of the worship center over by the playground entrance. For those of you who will be worshiping in the fellowship hall, you can access the two front doors uh, to the lobby of the fellowship hall. And for those of you who will be worshiping in the courtyard, you are welcome to enter through either of those side gates that enter you into the courtyard. We will be taking the Lord's table this Sunday. So it is a special Sunday where the saints will be gathered. We'll be able to participate together for the first time in a very, very long time uh, here at Grace Bible Church in the Lord's table. And as you come into every, each of those locations, the worship center, the fellowship hall, and the courtyard, there will be tables set up where you can grab uh, one of those prepackaged elements of the juice and cracker. You can grab it, serve yourself, and bring it to wherever you'll be sitting. And then when we will share the Lord's table together at the end of each service. So uh, we'd like to see those of you who are able to return to return. Worship with us. Um, we are limited, however, to how many can be on campus at any one given time, so we do ask you to register. Uh, you can visit our website and register there. Some of you may have received an email. 
uh, encouraging you to register in those links in your email. Um, let me add that the registration is for our purposes only to manage attendance and to make sure we are only we're keeping our numbers within the parameters that the county has set forth. Uh, I know that some of you may have a concern that we might be sharing those those red lists of attendees with the county or, or a government official, but uh, that's not the case. The registration is simply for our purposes to manage uh, the uh, the attendance here at Grace Bible Church. Let me just say a couple things about the health orders that are in front of us. As pastors, we recognize the current situation is not ideal. And I share with you that the overwhelming majority of you have been gracious in understanding that not everyone sees eye to eye on the current restrictions. And at the same time, you continue to love one another, to serve one another, to be compassionate with one another, and to really believe the best about one another. You know, we've, we've made clear our position as to why we continue to voluntarily submit to the county's shelter-in-place guidelines for churches. We believe it honors the Lord. It is an act of worship for us to submit to the governing authority that's over us where they don't call us to disobey God. And we don't believe in this instance that we are, we are being called to disobey God by limiting the way in which we worship. But to be clear, I want to be clear with you all, we are, we are not submitting uh, out of fear for what the government might do. That is, that is, we are not submitting because we're afraid of what might happen to us. We are not submitting out of fear over, over what the virus may or may not do. We are not submitting out of fear over what our neighbors might think of us if we don't follow the restrictions that counties have put in place. We are not cowards. We fear God and we fear God alone. And God in his wisdom for his purposes calls us to submit to every human institution. We are not called to decipher which laws are fair or unfair. We are not called as pastors to determine which laws are constitutional or unconstitutional, which, whether or not this whole thing is politically motivated or not. So unless a human institution calls us to disobey God, we will seek to voluntarily submit, even when we believe, as in this case, that the government is overreaching its authority. On that, on that note, let me say we are not fools either. We recognize that the goalposts continue to be moved. We recognize that the, the threat the virus initially posed may not be as serious as once thought. We are not being duped. We are not shepherding the church with blinders on, unaware of what's going on around us. We are shepherding with our eyes wide open and we are prayerfully seeking the Lord's wisdom as we continue to shepherd the church of God during these difficult times. We've stressed for over a month, and it began with my newsletter article over a month ago about fighting to preserve the unity of the spirit. And for the last month, we've been, we've been pushing the church towards understanding what it means to live together in unity when we have differences of opinion been pleading with you to be eager to fight for preserving that unity, setting aside our preferences, and considering the interests of others more important than our own. And, and not assuming, brothers and sisters, that you know the motivation of the hearts of people for the decisions they make to wear a mask or to not wear a mask. For example, for the most part, as a body, we have done well in this regard. And as I, as I pled with you in last month's newsletter article to fight for unity, let me also now plead with you today to love one another with a pure heart. 1 Corinthians 13 is a very familiar passage. Most of us have heard it at weddings. Uh, but let me share with you that as Paul writes this, this letter, 1 Corinthians, and particularly this section of 1 Corinthians, he is not writing it in a manner that is warm and fuzzy, that is read at weddings, describing the beauties of love, right? I believe the context here is really a rebuke and an exhortation to the church to love in a particular kind of way and to 
not love, uh, to love in a particular kind of way. Let me read the first few verses here, 1 Corinthians 13. If I love, pardon me, for, let me read for, for you from 1 Corinthians 13. If I speak in the tongues of men and of angels, but have not love, I am a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. And if I have prophetic powers and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have all faith so as to remove mountains, but have not love, I am nothing. If I give away all I have, and if I deliver up my body to be burned, but have not love, I gain nothing. Love is patient and kind. Hear those words. Love is patient. Love is long-suffering. Love bears with people. Love assumes the best about people. Love does not envy or boast. Love does not boast in your position. Love does not boast in your own wisdom. Love does not envy or boast. It is not arrogant. Right? It can be arrogant to assume and to presume that you know all things. Even about this whole virus, about about mass or not mass, or what the government should or shouldn't do. It is arrogant to assume you know all the answers about everything and that you are right. I, I, I bet you that we may not know for another decade who's right about any of this, frankly. But love is not arrogant, brothers and sisters. It is not rude. It does not insist on its own way. Hear that. It does not, love does not insist on its own way. It does not insist that we worship in only a particular kind of way. It does not insist on that. Love does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. Love is not irritable. Listen, these times we can get irritable. We hear things, we see things. We hear opinions, we disagree, and it can get frustrating. But love is not irritable. Love is not irritable, brothers and sisters. It is not resentful. It does not rejoice at wrongdoings, but rejoices with truth. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never ends. Love believes the best, brothers and sisters. It believes the best about, what, about other people's motives. It believes the best. Love doesn't presume or make assumptions about the hearts of people. I want to encourage you to resist that temptation. Resist the temptation to think that you know best. And walk humbly. And let your love for Christ and Christ's love for you compel you to believe the best about your brothers and sisters. We have differing opinions. We have differing opinions. But I have love for Christ and I have love for your brothers and sisters. Believe the best about one another. Believe the best. How will the Lord know that we're followers of Christ? How will the world know we are followers of Christ? Christ himself says, by how we love one another, but how we love one another, by believing the best about each other. Fight, brothers and sisters, to put aside every weight of sin that so easily ensnares you and look to Christ and seek to love the brethren. Seek to love the brethren by putting off your own desires, putting off your own preferences, setting those aside, and putting on the pursuit of seeking to love one another with a pure heart. I love you, church. I look forward to worshiping with many of you this Sunday. I look forward to the day when we can worship all together freely as we did several months ago. Until that time, I cherish the moments I have with you on Sundays and look forward to seeing many of you there. God bless.